Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Are there any ties between Mr. Trump, you or your campaign, and Putin and his regime? No, there are not. It's absurd. Uh, and, you know, there's no base to it. On the issue of Russia, though, uh, it is still important. I mean, Russian government hackers did break into DNC servers last month. We know that. We know that Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin have said very positive things about each other. You personally, of course, Paul, advised the pro-Putin former president of Ukraine. Why is it so far-fetched to blame the Russians and say that the motive was to help you? I don't know anything about what you just said. You may know it. And if you do, then you ought to expose it. (laughs) I want to say, you know, I don't even know what you're talking about. It's crazy. The fact that we're having this conversation is the wrong conversation. So to be clear, Mr. Trump has no financial relationships with any Russian oligarchs. That, that's what he said. I, I, that's what I said. That's obviously what the, the, our position is. <laughs> now he's under house arrest. Ten million dollar bail. He's fleeing the interview. He's fleeing the interview. I don't understand how this uh, how this works, this justice system of ours. Do you understand how this uh, justice system works? Because I don't understand how this justice system. You know, uh, you got a 12 count indictment, including conspiracy against the United States of America, also known as treason or tax violations. It just depends on what else there is, because this indictment, as long as it is, it's long. 31 pay it's long, 12 counts, it's big, it's bad, it's ugly, uh, isn't the entire uh, charge. It's not the whole case. It's just, uh, you know, a brief explanation is what it is. It's just the tip of the iceberg for those of you who are going down on the Titanic. Uh, listen, I'm telling you, get off the ship now. Get off, get off the ship now, go to the lifeboats. Go to the- and if you don't take my advice, there's nothing I can do to help you. There's just nothing I can do. I'm sorry. I tried. Uh, But this is just an amazing thing. I mean, Friday, obviously, uh, there was news on the Friday night news dump, which is now its own hashtag. Uh, That said that, uh, you know, uh, Mueller was going to unseal indictments, plural, on Monday. And so the whole weekend, uh, you know, for those of you who have intelligent friends who don't live in an alternate universe known as Fox News, Breitbart, and their Twitter feed... (laughs) Um, we were all taking bets, you know, like, who would it be? And, uh, you know, Manafort won my uh, particular poll. I did a bunch of polls. I did uh, a lot of polling this weekend. I did. Oh, I'm in a good mood now. Oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, we polled. All weekend we polled. And then we shopped. And then we watched football. Uh, but that was my weekend. And so if you talk to uh, people with some, uh, you know, ability to follow news, you know, they, I asked them, do you think it'd be Flynn? You think it'll be Manafort? Ted Nugent? <laughs> you know, I mean, we just, I was putting up crazy names. But honest to God, man, uh, you know, everybody knew it was going to be Manafort. Everybody knew, but nobody knew it was going to be this guy, Papadopoulos, who apparently pled guilty already, has already pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI when questioned about his contacts with Russians during, and that's an important word, everybody, during. Of the campaign. Now, you see, this is interesting because, uh, you know, Trump is tweeting up a storm. This time he he had a tweet with five exclamation points. Five, everybody. Five. Caps and five. Ex- you better withhold some exclamation points because, you know, Manafort was able to negotiate his, uh, you know, walking in the front door of the FBI instead. And this is why I don't understand our justice system, okay? You got a guy who's got this this massive 12-count indictment with unbelievable crimes against the United States. It, our democracy itself, okay, he put in peril. The, the, the amount of uh, money laundering, the amount of criminal activity in this indictment, and this is just, it says right at the beginning of the indictment, this is not everything, this is just, you know, some. This is just, you know, just some. So you know this is gonna get like off the hook worse And yet, if you were, I don't know, this weekend, uh, you know, stealing, which is terrible, terrible, 
stealing from Macy's, which I would say is a bad idea, only because there is a 60% coupon available today at Macy's, 60% off the entire store, 60% off. Why are you stealing? Why are you stealing? And if you'll go and pick up whatever it is you order online, 20% on top of that. I mean, they're giving crap away at Macy's. They don't make navy blue shoes. I went. I looked everywhere, Brett. They just, no one makes a navy blue man shoe. But anyway, I, so, okay, if that's what you do this weekend, you're in custody. Do you know? I mean, you spent the weekend in county jail. But this man is under house arrest with a little bracelet on his ankle. I mean, really? And he gets to walk in the front door. This is why, this is why we kneel. Do you understand? Just tying it all together and putting a nice little bow on it for you. Crazy. What a crazy freaking world. And, uh, of course, this is all about Russian contacts. This is all about Russian emails. You you might not remember this, but Paul Manafort was actually uh, wiretapped, remember? And they had intercepts. And he was saying, release them then. You know, go ahead. Show me to be, you know, uh, like a... And, and Trump is tweeting all weekend long that this this didn't happen during the campaign. This is years ago. How could he know? How could he know about Paul Manafort? I think he was the author of the phrase extreme vetting. Meanwhile, he picks this guy, Manafort, who's obviously all, I mean, all about dictators and representing them. Everybody, you know, I mean, his client list reads like uh, the torturer file. I mean, he, he represented, uh, you know, Mobutu, who was amputating people and, you know, uh, uh, raping little girls. You had uh, little boys being, uh, you know, a uh, 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 recruited for lack of a better word to fight in military i mean every his client list is like uh, the torturers lobby there he never met a torturer he didn't love you know you've got um uh, and, and you have him and and here's the weird thing because trump is saying oh this all happened before how could i know i couldn't vet him you know what is he talking about? Everyone knew. Every The newspapers knew. Magazines knew. I knew. Everyone knew. I mean, I think I was the first person to tell you that he, he was a, a foreign agent and failed to uh, you know register as one. I remember that show. And people were shocked to hear the word foreign agent. And they didn't understand that if you lobby for a foreign government, you had to uh, uh, you know, uh, register with the U.S. government as a foreign agent. And, and, and that all came up and, and people were like, I didn't even know that you had to do that. Yes, you have to do that. So but, you know, this guy, he he actually Manafort represented not just Viktor Yanukovych, which everybody knows, and not just, you know, a, a Mobutu and not just Ferdinand Marcos in the Philippines and, and, and not just every dictator that was publicly known information about Manafort. The only one that didn't know it was our president who says, I hire the best people. I know the best people. I hire the best people. And he hires them. And by the way, Paul Manafort did not just show up on the scene for the convention. Paul Manafort was working in Trump Tower on the campaign, uh, ingratiating himself to Ivanka and Jared and winning over hearts and minds of the Trump children while Corey Lewandowski was the named campaign manager. He was there a lot longer than you know or think. That's just a fact. And then uh, Manafort was the one who, uh, 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 you know, uh, cultivated Ivanka and Jared to his side of things and finally got them to hate Corey Lewandowski so much that the kids were the ones who advocated for Manafort to take over the campaign. OK, so just so you know, he was there a lot longer than you think. But here Trump keeps saying, you know, uh, he only worked for us for a short time and none of this happened during uh, the campaign. Wrong. Wrong. Remember, two weeks before Donald Trump became the Republican nominee, Paul Manafort offered the Russians personal briefings on the campaign in an email that uh, Mueller has. He offered through uh, one of his uh, 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 workers that works at his lobbying company that still lobbies in Kiev in Ukraine, 
uh, that was the intermediary between the Russian government and Manafort, and he offered Oleg Deripaska, who is an oligarch, a Russian freaking oligarch, who's suing him in the Cayman Islands because Paul Manafort is one of the greediest SOBs. I mean, it just wasn't enough for him. But Oleg Deripaska was his go-to guy uh, in, in Russia, you know, and he's uh, Putin's buddy, best friend, okay? You don't get to be an oligarch without uh, kissing Putin's ass. So Oleg Deripaska was the person he, he offered briefings to in emails on the Trump campaign and the Trump's position, uh, the Trump campaign's position on uh, 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 giving lethal weapons to Ukraine and staying in NATO and all these things during the campaign. So, you know, the FBI agents, when they raided Manafort's home, okay, they got all these documents and other records that Manafort refused to turn over. And we now know that Manafort was offering all kinds of briefings to Russians during the campaign. In fact, in one email exchange, days after Trump named Manafort as the manager of the campaign, Manafort referred uh, to his positive press and his growing reputation and asked Oleg Deripaska, OVD is how they, and they, they, they talked in code, uh, how do we use this to get whole? Meaning, how can I use my position in the Trump campaign as campaign manager now you see it's in the press I did it I'm in there I'm in how do I use this to get whole with you because Deripaska was suing him for like 19 million dollars of money that Manafort took to do some sort of a news media thing for Oleg Der- Deripaska and never produced so Deripaska was suing him in the Cayman Islands so he say okay listen I'm in I'm in Now, the other thing that's really important is this other guy you never heard of, George Papadopoulos, who was named by Jeff Sessions. At the same time, he named Carter Page. At the same time, he named Walid Fares. As at the same time, he named uh, 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 you know the five people to the uh, foreign policy team in, in in Northern Virginia that Sessions was running for Donald Trump before Sessions became the Attorney General. I mean, this is a crazy thing. Meanwhile, everyone is is associated with Russia. But anyway, this par- this Papadopoulos guy, his his indictment is stunning because. He was talking to Russians during the entire campaign. And the Russians kept telling Papadopoulos, we have dirt on Clinton. We have dirt on Clinton. Arrange a meeting. Arrange a meeting. And Manafort actually, in a footnote in this, uh, this is just unbelievable. Manafort actually tells Papadopoulos, um, well, he tells, he he says, um, When Papadopoulos tells him that he can arrange a meeting with Russians uh, that have, you know, with Putin's niece, okay, he thought that uh, uh, he was going to get a meeting with Putin's niece, Papadopoulos did. And so he keeps sending these emails to everyone in the Trump campaign saying, "Uh, I got I got connections. They got Hillary's emails. They got Hillary's emails and we got dirt on Hillary and they're going to give you dirt on Hillary. They're going to give you dirt on Hillary. And he keeps trying to arrange a meeting between the Russians And the Trump campaign, which finally did happen on June 9th in Trump Tower, where Manafort was there with Jared and with Junior and with Natalia Veselnitskaya, whose memo got public this weekend, where she was working for the Kremlin, too. Government attorney for the Kremlin. But one of these uh, footnotes said... Uh, And this is from Manafort. Let's discuss, you know, this uh, meeting. Let's discuss. We need someone to communicate that Donald Trump is not doing these trips to Russia, right? It should be someone low level in the campaign so as not to send any signal. And of course, it was this Papadopoulos dude who lied to the FBI and said, oh, no, no, no. All of these communications I had were before I was part of the campaign. Before, before, before. No. No. It was during the campaign. This whole narrative of none of this happened uh, during the campaign. This was years ago. How could I have known? I think Manafort's a decent guy, but I had no idea. I had no idea. You had no idea that his client list represented every single dictator this world has ever produced in modern history and Yanukovych and Ukraine and Putin. You had no idea, really? You didn't know? Well, everybody else knew you shouldn't be president. I question your judgment. Roads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.